There we are. Okay, for some of you who don't know, my name's Kevin Harvey, and I am not the preacher. A matter of fact, some of you are going to be surprised because I used to be a professional circus clown. So I don't know how much information, but it should be fun. Okay. So today, um, we're going to be starting a series, and it's not going to be every week, but uh, the series is The Garden of Our Hearts. Now, this is the first in the series, depending on how I do, this also may be the last. <laughs> so, anyway, shall we pray? Thank you, Lord, for this beautiful Sabbath day, the springtime that you have given to us, the time of rebirth. Lord, I pray that your words would come out and that your love would touch the hearts that are before us. Hold us and guide us. Be with us in this day and in our lives. We pray these things in Jesus, our Lord and Savior's name. Amen. Oh, it is a beautiful day out there. And... Uh, this time of year, we think about spring. And I don't know about you, but I have a, a garden I'm working on. And as any gardener knows, it takes a lot of work. You have to figure out what you're going to plant and when to put all these things together. And that's kind of what the series is, is about. So what seeds do you want in the garden of your heart? For me, one of the main seeds is a seed of gratitude. To look around and to see what it is that the Lord has done for you because it colors so many other things in your life. Now, when you plant the seed, you need to plant it deep. Like most seeds, it takes a while to germinate. But as it grows, it sets down roots deep. Now, I equate our faith with the soil. And if we don't have roots in the soil, the winds of adversity come up, and our lives get flooded with all kinds of things that can wash away this precious soil. But if we have roots that are deep in that soil, we can hold that faith. So, excuse me, just one second. I'll be right back. Now, when I was with the circus, I didn't speak, I was in pantomime. And so, <laughs> you'll forgive me, but I do need a drink. Now, the Lord fills our lives with a lot of things. And this glass is a representation of that. Now, a pessimist may look at that glass and say, that's half empty. The optimist would say, it's half full. But there's another thing. My thirst is now satisfied. And in that, we need to look at what the Lord has done for us. And the, uh, I have a, a rule of three, and that rule says you can last about three minutes without oxygen. If it's adverse conditions like a blizzard, you can survive about three hours without shelter. You can last about three days 
without water. And you can last about three weeks without food. Some of us a little bit more. <laughs> anyway, when you woke up this morning, did you say, thank God I'm alive. I'm breathing. Because some didn't have that option this morning. Did you know that the average person breathes about 22,000 times in a day? That's a lot of breathing. Think about to the garden in the stories. God formed man from the earth, and he breathed life into him. You know, I don't think he went, Pfft. No, he picks up man, holds him in his arms, and breathes into him. Do you think that every time you take a breath, that God is there breathing into you? You know, our hearts beat that 100,000 times in a day. Right there, just those two things, 122,000 blessings that we never even think about in a day. Now, for some folks, they wake up and the first thing on their mind is what do we have to do today? Where do I have to go? But... There have been times when I'm laying in bed and I'm thinking to myself, ah, oh, there's another breath. Thank you, Lord. I'm here in a nice, warm, safe bed. I didn't wake up hungry. All of these things are very important. They, they fall in that rule of three. But there's another thing that I thank God for when I wake up in the morning. I'm not in pain. Several years ago, I was driving along, and this drunk driver doing 80 in a 40 mile an hour zone hit me from behind. I was in a four door Buick. The left rear tire and axle was almost underneath the driver's side seat. Thank God. No one broke a bone. But if it could be pulled, twisted, or tweaked, it was. And my spine was rotated. In the beginning, now, I was in pain all the time. But in the beginning, I couldn't sleep more than two hours before my back would wake me up. Eventually, it became three, four. It was a year and a half before I got eight hours worth of sleep in a row. Still woke up with a messed up back, but I got more sleep. Now, fast forward several years later, I don't have any ill effects in my back. That is a miracle. And I thank you for that. But the thing is, is, when you are looking at all of these blessings, be grateful to the one who gives them to you. You know, it's a... Sorry about that. <laughs> um, you know, but when you're doing a garden, especially when you're first starting, you don't know how to do it. You know, what do I plant? When do I plant it? How deep? How much water? Anything like that? And what does a good gardener do? They look for an instruction manual. And where is ours? First, look to the grower's manual if you want to grow your garden. And, but sometimes you don't know where to look. So there's another thing you can do. Find someone who has a healthy garden and ask them. Find somebody who has in their garden what you want. Do they have joy? Do they have happiness? Do they have contentment? Find those who can grow it and learn from them. We've got people in amongst us that have been doing it for years. We've got people who are fairly new, but they're fairly good at it. 
Now, as some of the congregation knows, my garden last year was abundant, and I was able to bring in stuff for people, not because I was wanting pats on the back, but the Lord had blessed me to such a degree that I could pass on that blessing. And that, in in and of itself, is a blessing. You know, one of the things when you start looking for the blessings that the Lord has given to you, you know, sometimes it's just little things like, oh, he came up on an intersection and that light turned. How many of you say, thank you, Lord? His hand is in it. You know, people look at the vast universe and they say, oh, how great is the Lord. But have you ever looked the other direction? Do you know that in a teaspoon of healthy soil, there is more life than there are humans on this earth? One teaspoon. He's in the small things. All that life in the soil, that is what causes the plants to grow. So look to the little things as well as the big things. Here's something else you'll find out, is that when you start looking for the blessings, when you start saying thank you, the more you look, the more you see. When you start recognizing all of the things that the Lord has done for you and does every moment of the day, you can't help but start to smile because you see him in everything that is around us. Now, it's interesting that in a garden, you plant the seeds you want, but in that same garden, there are seeds you didn't plant that come up. Those weeds are sin. Any gardener in here can tell you that first you have to recognize the the sin or the seed because if you start seeds in the house, when when they first come up out of the ground, it doesn't matter what seed you plant. They all look the same. Those seed leaves come out And you can have a dozen different plants in that little planting bed, but you don't know which ones they are until the first set of real leaves come up. But if you let it go too long, one of the things about weeds is they set down deep roots, and it's hard to get rid of them. It's much easier when they're first starting out. You remember we talked about having that that gardener that has been doing this a while. If you have a mentor, if you have a friend that recognizes, oh, that's a weed, it's a whole lot easier to pull it out when it first starts than after it gets a hold. Have you ever thought where the first weed came from? You know, it was even before us. There was somebody in the Bible who had everything. They were the most beautiful. They had the highest position in heaven. You may have heard this person's name, Lucifer. He had what everybody else wanted. And to him, it wasn't enough. You want to talk about ingratitude? So even though he had everything a created being could ever hope for, I mean, he walked with God all the time, right there. Can you imagine? But that wasn't enough. You know, when I was talking to you about the the three rules, if you can breathe, If you've got shelter, if you've got water to drink, food to eat, you have got everything you need. 
But you know, Satan, he had everything he needed. And he said, wait, somebody's got more than I have. And he wanted that. You know what the 10th commandment is? Thou shalt not covet. Be happy in the blessings that the Lord has given to you. Don't look to what somebody else has because that is what Satan did. Now, misery loves company. And Satan, when he wasn't getting what he wanted, he went to all the angels. And he started saying, you deserve more. Well, you should have the right to, or whatever the lies are, because he is the father of lies. And you know what? He took a third of the angels with him when he fell. He wasn't satisfied. That wasn't enough. He came into the garden. And think about it. Adam and Eve. I mean, we were created to be gardeners. God created us and put us in the garden to take care of his garden. Adam and Eve, they had everything. Every good food to eat. The animals were their friends. They had no fear. And then Satan comes in and says, oh, you, you know, if you do this, you're going to be as God. And we fell for it. You know, I knew somebody in their life. It was, boy, if I only had the nicer car then I'd be happy. If I only had the nice house in the Cherry Creek School District, then I'd be happy. This person was never happy with what they got because they were never happy with what they had. Count your blessings and be satisfied. I mean, right here on the front of the, of the bulletin, 1 Timothy 6, 6 through 8. But in godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it's certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. Right there. Be content with what God has given to you. Look what he's done in your past. You know, I told you about that, that car wreck that I had, that drunk driver that hit me. Just a few years ago, I was in another accident. I ended up on my top with a one-ton truck on top of that. I literally walked away with one scratch. That's God working. Maybe it's for this moment. I don't know. But if you look to the blessings that God has given to you in the past, rejoice, because what he has done, he will do. He is doing right now. So, this is one of those things that everyone's going, oh no, he's only gone through one page. <laughs> uh, but, you know, the, the Lord is always with us. Now, one of the things when you have a garden, how you know weeds from good plants, is the fruit that it produces. You know, you talk about the tree of life, how it produced 12 different kinds of fruit, each in its season. You go, wow, that's great, one tree, 12 different kinds of fruit. But when you grow gratitude, 
in your garden. When it takes root, it has fruit as well, good fruit. When you grow gratitude, you have the fruit of contentment, of peace, of joy. You know, years ago, my mother used to take care of kids. And at one point, she had a little boy that had Down syndrome she was taken care of. One of the other mothers one day looked up, and when she was picking up her child, she saw this little boy with Down syndrome. And she goes, oh, that poor child. My mom said, what do you mean? Well, look at him. He's not as good as the other kids. My mom said, he is every bit as good as any kid here. Yes, he may not be as developed, but he's 100% just like every other kid. Look at the pure joy in that child's face. What would you give for that? You know, the other mother had to take pause. We are all God's children. We all have things that we're proud of and things that we're not. We're all his creation regardless of what the enemy tells us. We are good enough. We are loved. You know, some of us are dealt different hands than others. You know, different cards to play. These are mine. Literally the hands I was dealt. The Lord has given to me something that I cherish as a blessing. See, when you're young and you're taught how to tie your shoes, your mother shows you how to do it. I couldn't tie my shoes the way my mom did. I had to learn a new way. And that has carried me through life. Because there are people who said, I can't do that. Well, why not? Well, this is the way you have to do it. I think outside the box. I have to. We find another way. When you look to the Lord, everything he gives to us is a blessing, even the hard times. So, in all things... Be content. You know, when we first started, we talked about the glass being half full or half empty. You heard the third option. But here is the truth. It doesn't matter what's in that glass. What matters is the Lord always refills it. He fills us up to overflowing. Hold on to that. God bless. <laughs>